at Kagoshima guys, the view is absolutely amazing. The view is so good. I just, the view, it's just the best view ever. I, sorry, the view is just so amazing. I, I, sorry. That view, oh, it's just so good. I just, yeah, it's a really good view. Since the dawn of time and space, I've been traveling across Japan. My journey's taken me through wind and rain, jaw-dropping landscapes. Together we've met the most amazing people. Hell, we even got some free biscuits. But the never-ending journey that started many weeks ago in Yamagata Prefecture in North Japan has come to an end, and against the odds, we've reached our final destination, the city of Kagoshima in South Kyushu. How has my journey affected me, though? Did I actually lose any weight? And do I regret it at all? These are all questions that need answering in detail. But not today, even though the answer is yes, yes and yes. Because today, we've got just 24 hours to explore the city of Kagoshima, from becoming the most elite swordsman who ever lived in just two hours. And sampling Kagoshima's award-winning Wagyu beef, to lazing around in a traditional Japanese public bathhouse. Kagoshima has one of the most unique and instantly recognisable skylines in all of Japan, thanks to the smouldering Sakurajima volcano lurking out in the bay. Regarded as Japan's most active volcano, and eloquently translating as Cherry Blossom Island, it's not uncommon here for the locals to walk around with umbrellas in defence against the raining ash that often falls down upon the city. Sakurajima is one of 16 volcanoes on a UN special watch list, alongside Italy's Mount Vesuvius, which famously destroyed Pompeii, although fortunately Kagoshima has yet to face such an event. In the meantime though, the volcano and its seismic surroundings can be as much a blessing as a curse, as we'll find out later on during our day. Our first stop though is to meet up with Alex, a fellow British expat living in Kagoshima who's promised to finish off what's left of me after my lengthy journey by introducing me to the local martial arts. Jigen Liu is an elite school of swordsmanship dating back to the 16th century and unique to Kagoshima. Started by an undefeated swordsman who is said to have won 46 duels, at the core of Jigen Liu is the one strike strategy, whereby practitioners are trained to incapacitate opponents in just one brutal strike. So important is this technique that unlike other martial arts, practitioners aren't even trained how to lure or defend against an opponent. After all, there's no better defence than chopping your enemy clean in half before they've even had a chance to make fun of your mum. Under the tutelage of Alex and Master Ali Mura Sensei, I've got just one morning to learn the key techniques. So try and cut along the line of his jacket. That's it. So concentrate on throwing it forwards instead of cutting diagonally. So from here. When you finish cutting, it should be over two fist widths away from you. So if someone joins Jigenyu, they'd have to do this kind of basic mm. practice for about six months before they move on to the next next stage. How, how many months? Will I be about doing six this months? Half a year. Six months of yeah. this yeah. affecting this. Yeah. Good lord. See, so body does a lot of things you don't really notice until you kind of focus and you know try and iron out those bad habits. All the little things I've got to try and take into consideration: your posture, mm. your hands, where your hands are, the angle of the blade. Mm. So all those things at ten o'clock in the morning. <laughs> to become amongst the most formidable swordsman in all of Japan, historically a master of Jigen Liu would practice daily by striking a wooden post not once, not twice, but 11,000 times a day, 3,000 times in the morning and 8,000 at night. Pretty good stress relief. And yet for me, the hardest thing was plucking up the courage to carry out the unnerving scream that accompanies the attack. Shout. I'm more worried about doing the hair in the because <laughs> I know I'm going to go. Aah! So in Jigenyu they say never doubt the first strike, the second strike will lose. 
So you put everything behind the first cut. So the reason we walk like this in Suriyashi uh, is because if there are any obstacles on the floor like rocks or glass or something like that, you can kind of feel them out before you step on them. Also to kind of keep your movement from going up and down like this, it's better to have like a you know, balance while you're walking so that you can strike at any time. So those are the kind of main reasons for doing Suriyashi. My legs have been finished off from cycling, and now my arms are screwed as well, as well as my hands. How many of these uh, are you supposed to do in a day? Well, they used to do 3,000 in the morning, and then 8,000 in the afternoon or the evening. 3,000 in the morning, yeah. and 8,000 in the evening, 11,000 times. 11, and I've struggled to do 11 times. <laughs> like, Christ. <laughs> So after practice, to sweep the floor, cover your tracks, and uh, even that requires a little bit of concentration. My favourite thing was the, the foot movement, like the reasoning behind the foot movement for feeling out the ground before you, feeling for glass or anything that could injure you, where you sort of slide across, glide across the ground. As you do this, you can see why it takes so many years to perfect and uh, become perfect at. Something I can't really do in one morning. Having become the greatest swordsman who ever lived in just two hours, I reward myself by escaping to one of Kagoshima's public bathhouses. Oh, I haven't done this enough on the cycle. Sit in a hot spring. This is a public bath, the centaur, in the middle of Kagoshima city, just around the corner from where we're doing the sword fighting. And uh, it feels like it feels a little bit like I've gone back to the 1950s or something. 1950s style adverts and artwork. It is about one o'clock in the afternoon, so not many people come here this time of day, hence I've got the whole place to myself. In recent years, Sento public bathhouses have become a bit of a faded tradition, with people choosing to bathe at home instead. I tend to find the suburban bathhouses that remain today have something of a nostalgic atmosphere of faded glory. And that faded glory comes at a reasonable price as well. This one costs just 370 yen to enter and comes equipped with an old-fashioned massage chair and, of course, a fridge packed with Picari sweat. Perfect. But here, it's the hot spring water that takes centre stage. Kagoshima may live in the shadow of a constantly smouldering volcano, but living upon such a seismically active landscape does come with some benefits. Essentially, the city is one big hot spring, with over 2,000 hot spring sources spread across town. And so, whilst most public bathhouses in Japan simply use heated tap water, this bath pumps the mineral-rich hot spring water from deep beneath the city. It may look like your average Sento bathhouse, but it's actually a premium hot spring in disguise. It's funny, normally when you come to a place like this and ask the owner for permission to film, they say no, um, especially during the day. You have to come in at 3am at night, which is why most of my onsen hot spring scenes are filmed at like 3 or 4am in the morning. This place, the owner just didn't care. Now, there's, there's two guys here in it now. Um, but the owner was like, yeah, film whatever you want, do what you want. And um, yeah, people in Kagoshima seem a bit more relaxed, laid back and open-minded towards cameras. Or they just don't care, I don't know. Uh. If you find stripping down naked in a Japanese bathhouse a bit too daunting though, Kagoshima does have an exciting alternative. It's the only place in Japan where you can be buried alive in geothermally heated volcanic sand. It all comes down to personal preference. Would you rather relax in a soothing hot spring bath? or be buried alive in a pile of sand. What would you rather do? Leave a comment below. If the hot springs or the steaming sand hasn't piqued your interest so far though, the 1950s retro massage chair definitely will. On a scale of one to retro massage chair, look at this. 30 yen. What's that about? 30 pence. Is it a retro massage chair or is it a retro torture device? Let's find out. Oh. Something quite creepy about that. 
Most uh, Japanese massage chairs are very sophisticated. This bit is hidden, concealed behind the chair itself. So this just looks like, well, it just looks wrong. Let's do this. Oh. You can't really sink into it like a proper massage chair because this bit's sticking out. It's manual, so you use this handle here. It feels like administering some sort of torture device to yourself because you could, oh my God. <laughs> Ow, just gotta find the right spot. There we go, there we go. Oh wow, who, who knew something so simple could bring you so much joy? First thing I do when I get back from this never-ending journey across Japan, I'm gonna buy a massage chair. Because I, I, it's the one thing I really need in my life, a massage chair. If I had a massage chair, anything would be possible. Best 30 yen I've ever spent, definitely. Now, if you're a regular viewer of the Abroad Japan channel, you'll probably know I don't eat a whole lot of Wagyu beef. It's, uh, it's incredibly rare. Uh, yeah. But seeing as Kagoshima's Wagyu beef recently won the Japanese Wagyu Olympics, it makes sense to try it just this, uh, just this one time. Favourite dining experience in all Japan, teppanyaki, every single time. It's both an art form, watching it theatrically being cooked before you, and torture, because it's so damn close and you want it now, but you can't, and it's just, ah, oh, but then when it's here before you, beautifully laid out like artwork, it's worth the wait entirely. The people of Kagoshima are very proud of Kagoshima beef, and they should be. It's won the Japan Wagyu Olympics. Um, for the next five years, this is the number one beef in all Japan, as chosen by the experts of Wagyu beef across the land. Where we go. Holy crap, that's so good. It's really good. Oh wow. You know what guys, when I pictured today in my mind for weeks, months on end, the last day of the trip, what's it gonna look like? I pictured rolling into Kagoshima, the red carpet out, the crowds cheering, the fireworks display, an elaborate fireworks display no less. And yet today's been better than all of those daydreams I had. Eating Wagyu beef, having a sword fight, relaxing in an onsen, even if I can't hold the beer straight because my arm's shaking, because of the sword fighting earlier. It's been an amazing day um, and I've really enjoyed it. I've got a list of places. I've made a list of places I've visited on this trip that I'd like to go to again. Kagoshima's right near the top. Like I'm definitely coming back here to explore it more. This is what it's all about. Sitting alone, eating waggy beef, relaxing in a room, whilst my team of four or five people sit around me in envy, looking in envy and anger and despair as I eat this wonderful beef. We've got Chris Okane. Oh, hey. Charlotte in Japan over there. John over there. And they just had to sit there and stand and watch as I just enjoy myself. It's the way it is, isn't it? Well guys, I've had such an amazing day in Kagoshima. I've waited so long for this. And to be stood here looking out across the bay towards Sakurajima, it, it couldn't have ended any better. Thank you so much to all of you for being a part of Journey Across Japan, for following me across 2,000 kilometers. We've seen so much, we've met so many incredible people. Thank you to all my guests as well, and thank you to every person, every stranger we met along the way. The food, the places, the people, it's been one hell of an adventure. Well, there's gonna be one more video coming out after this, when the dust has settled in a few weeks, the epilogue to the trip, where I'll talk about how it affected me, spiritually, mentally, physically. Um, but for now, guys, a huge thanks for being a part of Journey Across Japan. I'll see you all again very soon. Now roll the credits. One last time, play that amazing song.
At last, old friend, we meet again. 